Hey folks, we are here, finally. My apologies terribly for uh, being so late. Technological glitch today. Uh, we're going to give a couple minutes for people to tune in that might have tuned in and left. Uh, again, my apologies. If anyone does tune in, I would love to see a thumbs up or a comment so I know that you can hear me. So do we have any audio out there? Before we get too far in, I'll introduce my good friend Jay. He's running the switchboard again today, like always. Most of you are familiar with Jay Hagen. If you're not, you'll know him on Saturday because he's promised a win in the Devil's Lake Chamber of Commerce tournament <laughs> or the chamber the casino he's gonna win them all sweep he's gonna sweep them all this year Jay's gonna sweep them all uh, of the 23 viewers that are logged in how about someone letting me know how the audio sounds is it loud and clear can someone share with me loud and clear Test one, two. Can someone tell me, is it loud and clear? 23 viewers. Can anybody, anybody in there? I can sing a Pink Floyd song if you guys would like. Anybody? Doug, can you hear it? Have you tried? Oh. It's not, or mine. Yeah, or on mine. Hello, hello. Hello. I don't want to go on until I know that people can hear me. Robert, thank you. I appreciate that, buddy. That helps a lot. All right, so people can hear me. So I'm going to make one little click on my keyboard here. All right, we're good to go. I'm going to get started because it's really, really hot in my studio tonight. I was going to do this out on the water, but I decided to stay inside because it's so hot. Last time I did that, my phone quit working because of the heat. So welcome to seminar number two this year, Devil's Lake Fishing Live. My name's Johnny Candle, but of course you would know that because it says that right on the screen who you're watching. Let's get started. Devil's Lake, water conditions. That's probably the best place to start. The water level, I just checked 10 minutes before we went live, 1450.64 feet above mean sea level. That's about two tenths of a foot higher than when we did this seminar in May before the ice went out. Official ice out date was May the 12th, I believe, is what the Devil's Lake uh, Lake Region Anglers said. So we haven't even had ice off the lake for a month now. So not quite a month with ice off. Water temperature is the big story so far this year. Uh, if you haven't been following the Devil's Lake weather, very, very hot, very, very calm. Temperatures near 90 for five, six, maybe seven days. No wind since Memorial Day weekend. And surface temperatures today over 75 degrees in a lot of places that I fished. Even the main bay, the main lake, Black Tiger Bay, the deeper parts of the lake are flirting with 70, a little bit plus or minus. Uh, I haven't seen a water temperature below 70 for three days where I've been fishing uh, west and north of Graham's Island. It's been over 70 degrees. Folks, 74 degree water temperature is about as hot as I've ever seen Devil's Lake, other than in the middle of a big algae bloom where all that green algae is absorbing the sun's heat. Uh, 75, 76 is, that's August temperatures and it's only June. So I don't know what that means. I wish I did. Uh, we're gonna talk about fish location and what they're doing and their behavior. And we'll talk more about water temperature then as well, but. 
right now uh, I'm just baffled by 32 degree water with ice on it less than a month ago, 75 degrees now. I can't get my bath water to warm up that fast out of my hot water heater. I mean, that's ridiculous for that to warm up that quick. Water clarity is a really, really big story right now on Devil's Lake. We're not known to have the cleanest water on earth. We do not have zebra mussels here, according to our game and fish department. And I'm not second guessing anyone, but I'm telling you right now, there's more than one spot in Devil's Lake that you can see the bottom in nine, 10 feet of water. Absolutely, unbelievably clear based on what we've seen in the past. Now, a couple things come into play. We did not have a huge amount of runoff this spring. We had some, lake came up foot, foot and a half, but it didn't come up real fast. It didn't wash a lot of dirty water into the lake, so that didn't help. And I'm not so sure I've seen a seven day period like this one where the lake has been mirror flat. I mean mirror flat for seven days now. So anything that was in the water, it has settled out. Uh, big, big key to catching fish right now is finding the dirtier water. There's no doubt about that. Uh, water temperature is normally what we're chasing in June. We're usually telling viewers right now to go out and look for water that's 63, 64, 65 degrees and you're gonna find fish. Well, water temperature is not an issue, folks. You're gonna find 70 degree water just about everywhere you look. So it's not about water temperature. It's about water clarity right now. Jay is sitting here. He fished today. I fished today and yesterday. Talked to several other guides that have been fishing every day. I saw 50 walleye today. With my eyes, I saw 50 walleye today. There were times casting jigs that you would reel a jig in and there'd be three following your jig to the boat. You'd see the white tails. They show up like fluorescent light bulbs under the water. They're not hard to see. There's other places where you're cruising around with your electric trolling motor. Throw your live sonar away, folks. Just look in the water. You don't need Mega Live right now. I, no offense to Humminbird, no offense to Lawrence or Garmin, who makes, they all make really, really good stuff. But uh, you can see walleye 30, 40, 50 feet away from your boat right now uh, when you're in this crystal clear water. I'm not gonna even say they're afraid of your boat because they don't really swim away. They kind of look up at you, and if they had a middle fin, I think they'd be pointing it right at you because they don't eat anything. You can throw a jig right at them and put it right in front of their face, and they just sit there and stare at it and slowly turn around and swim away. So finding dirty water right now is definitely key to having a successful walleye fishing outing. Uh, absolutely critical. Now, cloud cover helps. We've had some hazy mornings, a uh, couple days, uh, even low light. I know I'm picking my guide clients up uh, 6 a.m. the last couple days. I might even push it earlier if it stays hot and flat like this because those first couple hours on the water in the mornings for me have been uber, uber, uber critical. I mean, no bites after 10 o'clock in the morning today, not one. So we fished from 6.30 till 10 o'clock and caught really, really well. And after 10 o'clock, we bupkis, white bass and pike, but we're out there chasing walleye. So low light early in the morning, really, really critical. I'm gonna assume that the same holds true for the evening hours. I don't go back out on the lake in the evenings, so I can't say firsthand information, but I gotta believe when that sun starts to set, eight o'clock, 8.30, nine o'clock. Uh, it, it doesn't get dark till dang near 10. Now it's getting close to the longest day of the year. So getting out there in the evening, also probably gonna be well worth the effort. Now, that sounds kind of good. If I wasn't a fishing guide, it would be kind of cool to fish from daylight till eight o'clock and then from eight o'clock till dark and not have to get all hot and sweaty and swat bugs and all that stuff. But uh, man, Got to find dirty water. If we get any breeze at all, it helps, puts a ripple on. The windy shorelines are definitely producing the most fish. Uh, let's talk fish location. Where are they at right now? 
Uh, I'm seeing fish just about everywhere you think you should based on the calendar, not on water temperature. Based on the fact that it's the first week of June, June 7th today to be exact, shallow back bays, even though the surface temperature is 77 degrees, there's still fish in there. Uh, places uh, like Howard's Bay, Holly Bay, New Mill Bay, uh, Knutson Bay, you get uh, over east, Black Tiger Bay, Penny Bay, uh, Brown Slough, Jerusalem Cooley, all the Hay Bale Bay, all those favorite places, Stromies Bay, all those places that everybody flocks to normally in June are the places to be. That's where the walleye are. But again, if the conditions aren't right, it's really hard to get the bites. But when you look at water temperature, there's a certain population of the walleye that are following that instead of the calendar. And I've had guide buddies. I haven't done it personally, but I've been told by many reputable fishing guides on the lake, they're catching fish on slip bobbers as deep as 20 feet of water, 18 to 20 feet of water. Several uh, gentlemen from Bry's Guide Service, again, very, very reputable guides, 18 to 20 feet of water every morning. Limits of fish on bobbers in an hour, hour and a half. I've got uh, other guide buddies that are pulling bottom bouncers and spinners on flooded roads. And it's not just one, it's flooded roads, the Golden Highway and uh, the road in Strummies and some of the other gravel roads all around the lake. Uh, people are pulling bottom bouncers and spinners and having success just like it was July when they normally go there. So some fish are following the calendar right now. Other fish are following the water temperature. What does that mean for us as anglers? It means that we've got a lot of opportunities to go catch fish. The other thing that I'm enjoying about it is it's spreading out the boat pressure. Normally this time of year, those back bays are so thick you can't turn your boat around and go back over a fishing spot. So far this year, because boats are spread out, some guys are in back bays, some guys are in 18 feet of water with bobbers, some other anglers are on flooded roads, it's spread the pressure out so you get to fish a little bit more alone. Kind of feels like the Devil's Lake of 15, 20 years ago when you didn't have packs of 15 and 20 and 30 boats. So I'm really, really, really enjoying that about the fishing so far. Uh, how are we getting these fish to bite? Let's talk about that a little bit to get started. So far for me, number one method, and Jay, if you wanna to switch to the other camera, we'll start showing, we'll show some uh, fishing lures here. The number one fishing method for me are jigs and soft plastics, uh, soft plastic tails. This happens to be a box of uh, walleye assassins. These are uh, a lot of people's favorite baits here on Devil's Lake. So all these baits over here are walleye assassins. I think they're called turbo shiners, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, best colors have been whites, silvers, perches. They're all working. Over here, I've got a row of Shields Swimming Minnows. They're a three and a half inch bait. Also, uh, you can tell which ones are almost empty. The white one's been really, really good because I'm running out of baits there. This uh, funky green color, I don't even know what it's called. I'll hold it down here. But that sucker's been on fire for a couple of days as well. So these baits have been really good. There's more though, I've got more. Good old Berkeley Ripple Shads. I don't know how you can go wrong with a Berkeley Ripple Shad. These things, uh, incredible. You can tell what my favorite colors are because what, 80% of that box has white tails somewhere in there. But those have been working really, really well also. Three and a half inch is my preferred choice. The pearl white has probably been the best. Uh, this right here may be a box of my favorite plastic tails right now. These are pro swimmers. Uh, they're available under two brand names. The first brand name would be Big Bite Baits. You'll see that a lot. They make the pro swimmer, but they also private label the pro swimmer for Shields. And if you buy the packages from Shields, you get one extra bait and save about 75 cents on the package. So it is quite a substantial cost savings. 
It is the exact same bait. There's nothing different about the Shields one versus the Big Bite Baits one. Big Bite has a lot more color options. I'll show you some of those here in a second. But my two favorites so far are these two right here. I've got the pearl white and I've got the white ice it's called because it's got a little bit of glitter in it. I think you can see that in the camera pretty well. Uh, these are the 3.3 inch version. They're actually closer to three and a half inches, but who's gonna get upset about two tenths of an inch? Uh, they fish really, really well. They seem to be the preferred size. When I'm fishing uber clear water like we have been, I'll drop down to the 2.8 inch version and I'll, I'll put a bigger one in the middle just so you can see the size difference. There is a little bit difference in size there. It seems like in that really clear water, if you downsize just a little bit, some days, not always, but some days that helps, helps a little bit with getting a few more bites. I talked about Big Bite having some other colors that are not Shields colors. And here's some of them down here on the bottom. We've got this uh, purple and chartreuse that looks really good. Uh, we've got this chartreuse ice, which is not a bad color at all. I like this color right here. This is called perch dinner. It's kind of a green pumpkin. It's got a lighter belly, but it's got orange, orange and gold glitter in there. And uh, when they're feeding on perch, that's really good. And not that it matters, but this uh, goby looking color here, when we had dirty water, that was working really, really well. But uh, don't need that with clean water. Uh, and then this color here, I believe most of us call it Barbie. I'm not 100% certain what color it's labeled on the package, but uh, the purple and pink head with the purple, purple and chartreuse dots, that uh, has caught quite a few fish as well. Bottom line is if you have a favorite swim bait, put it on a quarter ounce jig head. I'll put some of them right here so you can see what I'm using there. Put it on, I gotta find the right spot there, a quarter ounce jig head and throw it around. And you'll notice that those heads don't have any paint on them. And if you were losing them at the rate I'm losing them, you wouldn't put paint on them either. Uh, I'm using a 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader and still getting bit off by pike 10, 15 times a day, 20 times a day on the bad days. So I don't put paint on the heads. And those of you that follow my personal Facebook page know that we haven't had any trouble cleaning limits of walleye every day. So an unpainted quarter ounce jig head, I make these myself. Uh, you can find them at any of the local tackle shops. You can find them at a Shield Sporting Goods store. Order them online. There's lots of places to get quarter ounce jig heads. But save yourself a few dollars and forego the paint. Uh, I don't believe that it's making that big of a difference out there. So let's just put our favorite swim bait. I would say stick to something white or silver in the clean water. Um, as it gets dirtier, then go ahead and switch it up and try something else. Retrieves have been different every day. Every day it's different. Some days uh, when they're really tuned up, if the water is churned up, if we've got a little color in the water, a straight retrieve seems to work all right. You can just cast it, reel it, straight retrieve, keep it near the bottom, life is good. When things are not working quite the way we want them to, then we have to cast, reel, let it sink to the bottom, lift it a little bit, let it sink to the bottom, lift it a little bit more, let it sink to the bottom, and they're hitting it on the drops. You got it, Jay, it's, it, was, it, was, it was working. It'll come back on. If not, don't worry about it. Yep, there we go. Camera number two is back in, in play, folks. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. Um, but some days really slow, some days really fast. We do start out every morning casting to the shoreline. I'll put the boat in eight or 10 feet of water. I'll cast right up to the shoreline. And you can see with your bites, 
or if you do use a mega live type sonar, you can see those fish move off the bank as the sun comes up. The first couple fish are gonna come within feet of the bank, then the next couple bites come a quarter of the way back to the boat, then they're coming halfway back to the boat, and the last couple fish we're catching towards the mid-morning, towards the afternoon, are coming right at your feet. I have to urge my guide clients daily, keep that jig on the bottom as long as you can. I know it's painful to fish it all the way back to the boat on the bottom, but if you only bounce it two or three times and reel it in instantly, you are doing yourself a disservice and are not going to catch the number of fish that you could, especially with these fish following like they are and not eating. They'll follow it right to the boat. When you start to lift it off the bottom to reel it in, be ready for that sudden bite as they chase it off the bottom and hit it literally with five or six feet of line out. It's absolutely mind blowing how they're doing that. So jigs and swim baits are working really, really well. On occasion, if I can find a nice weed patch and there are some weeds coming up, I will switch to shallow diving crankbaits. Here's a box, shallow diving shad wraps. These are the ones that the world uh, knows affectionately as the crooked bill shad wraps. Uh, I've got some whites in there, some purple, some fire tigers, some perches, all very, very effective. They work really well. They dive about five feet at the most on a cast. Great, great crankbait. And that other one that I've enjoyed using the last couple springs and uh, I'll tell you why I like these a little better, are the shallow flicker shad. There's a couple of reasons I like these a little bit better. Number one is they're cheaper, and I'm not gonna pull a punch there at all. They're a buck, buck and a half cheaper than a shallow diving shad wrap, uh, so they don't hurt the pocketbook as bad. Number two, they're heavier, so they cast further. And with the water clarity like it is, the farther you can cast, the more fish you're going to catch. Uh, again, I, I have this conversation daily with the fishermen in my boat. Get that jig as far away from the boat as you possibly can. Uh, we need to get it away from the boat so we're not spooking fish. And the last reason I like these a little bit more is they rattle. The shad wraps are a balsa bait. They don't rattle as much. So again, Shallow shorelines, over the tops of maybe a little bit deeper weeds, casting shallow crankbaits is also working pretty well. I talked about slip bobbers, right? Got my slip bobber set up right here. Plain hook, I like a little chartreuse bead on there maybe, about a quarter ounce split shot and my slip bobber. Uh, throw these out there uh, and let them sit and do their job. Where's the best place to use a slip bobber? Well, anywhere a walleye lives. That's the smart Alec answer. But what most folks do on the lake, they will cast, 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 till they see a fish or two follow. And then they'll move off the spot a little bit further, get those bobbers as far away from the boat as they can and have a good chance to catch some fish. A good friend of mine today, uh, Dan Bonham, the owner of Ed's Bait Shop. There you go, Dan, there's a plug for you. You owe me. The owner of Ed's Bait Shop. He pulled into a bay uh, that I had fished earlier in the morning. I told him there's a lot of fish in here, but the bite really slowed down. Casting, uh, I got a text from him an hour later, and he said, I can't keep three bobbers in the water with three anglers. Uh, so the bobber bite for him really took off in the same bay where I was fishing with jigs and they quit biting jigs. So the fish were still there, throw the bobbers out, let the leech do the work. Uh, by far, leeches are the best bait I can think to put on the business end of a slip bobber. Last technique that we mentioned is the good old bottom bouncer and spinner, right? We've got our bottom bouncer right here. Uh, I've got this one tied up with a spinner. I think that's a Max Smile Blade. It's a UV Glow Burst. It's a white Smile Blade. I'll tip this with a half a Nightcrawler or I'll tip it with a Berkley Gulp. I like the Minnow Grub, the three inch Minnow Grub or a, a three inch Gulp Minnow. 
with a straight tail. Put that down there, drag it up and down flooded roads, outside weed edges. But uh, again, the spinner bite is working fairly well at this time. Let's see, what else should we talk about? What else should we talk about? How about questions? We've got nearly 100 viewers. Jay, do you have a, anybody with a question? There was a question. Craig Larson, what's the situation with deadheads on Devil's Lake for those who are new to the lake? Deadheads on Devil's Lake. So the Grateful Dead hasn't played a concert here, Craig, in probably 45. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, deadheads on Devil's Lake. I actually smacked one today going into a bay. I think I have a little transducer. I'm looking at my boat out the doorway out there. I think I have a little transducer issue I need to adjust <laughs> tomorrow. It caught my bracket a little bit. So Devil's Lake and navigating is, is pretty straightforward. We have to remember, historically, Devil's <laughs> Lake was this big once before, and then it shrunk, and it got pretty small. But it stayed pretty small for a long, long, long time. Long time, right? Hundreds of years, maybe decades after it came back and got small again. That core part of Devil's Lake never had vegetation. It never had trees. Right now, that old Devil's Lake shoreline is 26 feet of water, 25 feet of water, somewhere in there. If you are deeper than 25 feet of water and hit something, it was not attached to the bottom, right? There, there is nothing growing in 25 feet of water or deeper. There never has been, never will be. Shallower than 25 feet of water, you have to watch out because there could have been a hardwood forest there once upon a time. Most places are pretty clear of deadheads now, but you'll see most of them sticking up. When you start getting close to deadheads out of the water, slow down because there's going to be deadheads broke off right at the level of the water. So again, I was idling in today to a bay. I did not do damage. I don't want anyone to think I like tore the transducer off my boat. I flipped it up the way they're supposed to work. I did not do damage to my boat because I was going four miles an hour. Had I hit that deadhead at 24 miles an hour and 17 feet of water, ugh, that could have been really bad. So my advice to you, idle out from the shore to the middle of the lake, run to where you want to go, and when you get to your fishing spot, drive in perpendicular to shore at idle speed. If you feel more comfortable putting someone standing up or looking over the side of the boat ahead of you, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I would not put them in the bow of my boat because if you hit something, they could go toppling right over the front of the boat. But Maybe have someone stand up to get a better viewpoint, keep an eye on the water, but idle in. Um, most of the stuff I've seen is 17, 18, 19 feet of water. That's where I've seen the most deadheads sticking up. Uh, do we have any other questions? That's hard to believe we only had one. Come on, guys, gals, there's lots of you watching. Make up a question. I don't want to quit yet. It's only 7.30. There's got to be more questions. Uh, let's see, some other things to talk about. If you're coming this weekend, Casino Cup Tournament, correct? C casino Cup. They launch from the casino 7 a.m. Saturday morning. I would probably avoid the casino boat ramp parking lot Saturday morning. I'm not saying that the casino is not a great place to frequent, but it's going to be really busy. 110 teams, I believe. It's sold out. The weigh-in is at 3 p.m., uh, or the first flight is in at 3 p.m., I suppose. Uh, it'll be fun. It's going to be exciting. There's going to be some big fish caught. There's been some big fish come in this, this year. The following weekend is the Devil's Lake Open, I believe. Lake Region Anglers Association, so lakeregionanglers.com, right, is the website. If you want to fish our local club tournament for the Lake Region Anglers, the following weekend, uh, Jay, help me out with the dates. Do you know what the day? June, that'll be what? 23rd? 23rd? No, the open is the 17th. 17th. Uh, so go on uh, lakeregionanglers.com. You can get an entry form there or show up at, that's out of uh, Lakewood Beach, right? Lakewood Beach, Six, Six Mile, mile Six Mile Bay. Or show up at Six Mile Bay 
Uh, one team member has to be a lake region angler, I believe, and then everyone else can fish. All of them. All of them. See, I'm not president anymore. They changed all the rules. <laughs> Uh, and then the following week, this one I'll get right because I wrote it down. On June 23rd is the Devil's Lake Chamber Tournament out of Graham's Island State Park. Uh, if you do want to launch at Graham's Island that day, no problem. Be there whenever you want. We will actually let you cut in front of the line of all the other anglers. Launch your boat ahead of the tournament anglers. But June 23rd, Graham's Island State Park. Uh, registration till June 15th at the current price. After June 15th, the price goes up 25 bucks a team. And then if the Chamber Tournament fills to 100 boats, I believe it's 100 boats, by the 15th, the Chamber of Commerce will add $1,500 to the prize pool, or first place, actually. First place goes up $1,500. So that's a good deal. Let's see, I got another question. How are the mosquitoes and gnats on the water. Uh, that is Kim. Kim, I have not got bit by a mosquito yet on the lake. Uh, gnats, fish flies, lake flies, whatever you want to call those other pesky bugs, are actually on the downturn right now. I think the peak of this first bug hatch is over. There's still some remnants out there, but they're not in those big massive, massive swarms that we had five or six days ago. Uh, you didn't dare open a can of pop and not drink the whole thing a week ago because it would have been full of bugs and they don't taste so good. Uh, Robert asked, how accessible is Pelican Lake now and how are the water levels? So Pelican Lake, uh, very accessible actually. Uh, I've been fishing Pelican Lake probably twice, three times this spring. Absolutely no trouble getting around. Uh, you can get to all your favorite spots in Pelican Lake relatively easily. I have crossed the railroad tracks with extreme caution. The far east side and the far west side are both passable. Uh, I saw a couple boats slither, I'll use the word slither, over the railroad tracks the other day. I wouldn't try it in the middle, but I saw some very small boats drift across the railroad tracks in the middle. Uh, accessibility via Graham's Island State Park or any other boat ramp south of the bridge is great. I have not used the Pelican Lake boat launch personally, but I've seen upwards of 50 trailers a day in the parking lot and their big tandem axle, Ranger, Nitro, Warrior, Lund, trailers. So I'm assuming it's no issue getting in and out of the Pelican Lake boat launch. Uh, you do need to be aware that there's a $20 charge per day. Put it in the box with your name on it, your license number, $20 bill, slip it in there and uh, go ahead and launch. It does help on the windy days having that launch up there, but we haven't had a windy day for a while, so no need to use that. I've been driving up there from uh, Graham's Island State Park. Water levels, uh, I talked about this earlier, 1,450.64 feet above mean sea level. That's a great water level. Quite honestly, if there was a way to lock Devil's Lake in at 1,450, you would never hear another peep out of my mouth. I think that would be a great level. You can get in and out of all the shallow bays. You can get over flooded roads. Boat ramps are in great shape. They're great levels. It's easy to launch and retrieve your boat. It keeps a lot of water in the northern lakes. People can fish up there. Uh, Mike's Lake, all those places, uh, Lake Urban. And by the way, the bite is phenomenal up north as well. Uh, but everything's accessible with water levels at this height. Uh, when it gets a, any lower than this, it starts getting dicey. And quite honestly, if it gets much higher than this, it creates a lot of havoc with farmland and homes along the lake and all that kind of stuff. So if I could pick a number to keep the lake at, 1,450 feet above sea level would be pretty good, I think. I, I wouldn't complain. Oh, who's calling me? Mark Brazali, you're going to have to wait a couple minutes. Uh, any other questions? Do we have any other questions? Jay, anything? Looking. Nothing on my site. Um, this is a lot more fun, guys, if you ask me some questions.
click on a few uh, things here. Okay. Uh, Jeff Moore said he's fishing with you in late August. What's the best setup for line for cranking? Is lead core better than braid up there? I'll be fishing on my own after. All right. So late August, the, the line of choice for me would be lead core fishing line. Late August, you got to realize what's going on then in the, in the bait fish life cycle. So early in the spring, right now, all the bait fish are left over from last year. So they're pretty substantial size. We're using three and a half, four inch swim baits. That's a pretty good size swim bait, right? Three and a half, four inches. Sometime about July, late July, the young of the year bait fish become edible. So they're an inch, inch and a half, two inches long. By August, they're right in that two inch range. So number five shad wraps, flicker shads, number four, number five salmo hornets, all these baits that are gay big, about that big. It's impossible to get those baits 25 feet deep where the fish usually are in August because of water temperatures without adding some kind of weight to your system. So can you pull those on super line with a snap weight? You sure can, but a snap weight is kind of tough to control the depth without reeling it up, letting it down, reeling it up, letting it down. Uh, it works, it works very well. There's a lot of people that do it and maybe I struggle because I haven't taken the time to learn it well enough. The other option to get it down is lead core fishing line. Obviously lead core line is weighted, it sinks, but it sinks from one end to the other instead of all in one spot. So it spreads that weight out over maybe 160 feet of line that you might have out. So when you speed up and slow down, it rises and falls with some control instead of lifting straight up and plummeting straight to the bottom and you lose track of your lures. So when you come fishing with me in August, Jeff, make sure you bring your lead core because that's what I'm going to teach you how to use because I don't use snap weights. Now, will deep diving crankbaits like a reef runner, uh, a, a bandit, uh, salmo free divers, all these lures that dive 25, 30 feet deep on super line, will they catch some fish? They will. They will, they'll catch fish. There's no doubt they'll catch fish, but they're big baits. They're four and a half, five, five and a half inches long. And again, the main forage is gonna be two inches long. So you're gonna have to find a fish that's really hungry and willing to chase down that big meal. Does that mean you'll catch bigger fish on those baits? Yeah, you will. You will catch bigger fish. When you start targeting bigger fish, you're gonna get less bites because there's less big fish in the lake. I prefer to get those smaller baits deeper, lead core line, get more bites, and let the chips fall where they may on the big fish side. Let's see, uh, what are the best color of flicker shads? White. <laughs> Next question. White. <laughs> yeah, white. Uh, no, in all serious, uh, the, the white ghost, one of my favorites, uh, the color they call mouse, which is the white with the gray back. That seems to catch a lot of fish here on Devil's Lake. Uh, let me see, what do I got in my, in my box here? I don't, I don't know all the names of the colors. I just know which ones work. Is this one, uh, Jay, we'll switch to the other camera. HD perch, right? Is that, I think that's what that's called. The, the high definition perch color. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal bait when they're feeding on perch. There's another perch color here. Let me not get hooks in my finger. I do not know what this perch color is called, but I like it a lot because it's kind of halfway between perch and fire tiger. It's a brighter perch. It's got a really bright orange belly, almost chartreuse sides with the bars on it. It's obviously not the hd perch i'll lay them side by side here if i can it's not the hd perch by any means and it's also not as bright as fire tiger right so it's in the middle it's in the middle and that seems to appeal to a lot of fish uh, i've had some really great catches on that and let's see i'm not done i'm not done i've got more colors here this is a color that's been good the last couple years. And again, I have no idea what it's called. It's part of the flashy series. It's kind of translucent, 
It's got the holographic foil inside the bait. I, why is it locking in on my finger? It's got the holographic foil inside the bait, some black bars, a lot of flash. It's good in clean water. I think it imitates a white bass really well. Uh, I wasn't kidding when I said white because I have a lot of white ones in here, like this color white right there. Again, the foil on the inside works really well. This, uh, this bait here is called Shad, I believe. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a lot of tooth marks in that sucker. That one's caught a lot. So those are colors I, I use a lot. The best advice I can give anyone about colors when they come to Devil's Lake is remember what the fish feed on. We do not have tulabies, whitefish, smelt, alewives, shiners. We don't have that here. We have walleye, northern pike, white bass, yellow perch, black crappies, and a handful of suckers swimming around the lake. The fish eat other smaller versions of those fish. Primarily feed on yellow perch and white bass. If you are imitating a perch or a white bass, you are going to be using a color that the walleye are used to eating. It's going to give you the best chance to catch them. And I say it a lot kind of jokingly, but I'm really not joking. If you show up here with three boxes of white swim baits and three boxes of white crankbaits, you will go home catching fish. Day in and day out, white is really, really hard to beat on Devil's Lake. Really hard to beat. Really hard to beat. Did I mention that white is really hard to beat on Devil's Lake? White is a really good color on Devil's Lake. Any more? Question, what color spinners with bottom bouncers? Didn't I just say white? <laughs> silver, I love a silver spinner. I like a silver spinner with a white gulp tail. Again, I'm imitating a white bass. And if you put a hammered silver spinner with a white three inch twister tail or a white three inch gulp minnow and drag it beside the boat, you're gonna say, wow, that looks like a white bass. It really does. I like a gold spinner with maybe a fire tiger or a dark green tail. And that is going to imitate the gold and green, maybe some orange of a perch. So again, I've got whites and golds, white bass and perch. Fire Tiger is a great color always. It's a fluorescent perch pattern, dirty water. That works really, really well. Uh, and uh, I don't know, you'll hear guys catching on purple, on blue, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I'll tell you what, you got something white, something Fire Tiger, a silver and a gold. Between those four colors, you're going to catch, you're going to catch something. I've got no more questions here on my end. We've been going at her for 42 minutes straight. So again, uh, I'll run through water level, 1,450 feet. Water temperature, mid 70s. Yes, that's mid 70s if you tuned in late. Water clarity, anywhere from three feet to eight feet of water clarity. Again, I can't urge it enough. If you pull into a bay and you can see the bottom in 10 feet of water and you look over the side, and can see five or six walleye swimming around. I'm not going to tell you don't fish for them, but I'm going to tell you be ready to be frustrated. I personally have left fishing spots the last couple days because the water was too clear and I didn't want to deal with the frustration. Look hard enough, find that colored water. You're going to catch some more fish. Quarter ounce jigs, three and a half inch swim baits, shallow diving crankbaits, bobbers and leeches and spinners are all working. If I don't have any other questions, uh, oh, last thing I got to remind people, there's a lake, a giveaway, a big prize package giveaway at my next live seminar. To enter the contest, you need to take any picture of someone enjoying the Devil's Lake area, right? You can be water skiing, fishing, hiking, biking, having a picnic, throwing water balloons at each other, whatever you want to do around the Devil's Lake region, post that picture to your social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, hashtag it Devil's Lake ND. The contest people will select 
they're going to have a, a vote on what picture is the best, and whichever one is voted the best will win this cooler full of goodies. I mean, it's like beach stuff, lake stuff, hats, jackets, cups. I don't know what all is in there. But we're going to announce that winner at my seminar next month, so the first Wednesday of July. So you have a month to take a picture of the lake doing anything, hashtag Devil's Lake ND. They'll see it, they'll pick the winner, we'll announce it on my seminar in a month. So keep that in mind. Again, casino tournament this weekend. Any guys from the casino tournament watching, uh, I hope that you're not relying on my information to win. But if you are, best of luck to you. And uh, again, two other tournaments, Devil's Lake Open, Devil's Lake Chamber Tournament. Come out and see us, cheer at the weigh-ins. Other than that, folks, have a great evening. Bring lots of sunscreen. Bring lots of cold drinks. Be safe on the water. We'll check you in a month. Have a great evening. Take care.